In this video, I asked you guys to send me your Bedwars games so that I could review them. I picked three different games that I'm going to watch over and I'm going to talk about exactly what I think they did good and some mistakes that they made and how they could improve them. In this video, I talk about some tips where you can lose your bed less often, an example of the perfect doubles Bedwars game, and also some common mistakes that people make when they're trying to clutch in Bedwars. If you want to be in a future video like this, you can submit your games down in the forums link below. Just make sure you're following all the guidelines that I set. If you enjoyed this new style of video, let me know down in the comments below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I put a ton of effort into my videos and any support would mean the world to me. So here we are in our first game. This one was submitted by Dab Soon. This is a solo Bedwars game on Lighthouse. Now I decided to pick this game because he does a lot of things really well, but there's some things that could be done that a lot of people don't do and they can win a lot more games if they do it. So he starts off here by just ignoring the bed defense and 32 rushing on Lighthouse, which is fine. It's a pretty risky strat that I find. I never do it, but it worked. He gets the bed here. You know, he, did, he does a good job. He makes his way over to pink base to get a pretty free kill here. I don't really know what this person's doing, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're dead now. That's all that matters. Decides to go straight towards gray, just heading in the same direction the entire game. Again, as I said, one thing I, I like to do is to just look around all the time just to make sure I'm not getting rushed from the other side. But hey, it worked out here. Goes in to get that kill. Kind of does. You know what? That works. <laughs> this person somehow manages to get out and die. Nope. Okay, they're gonna die... Now they, now they die. That's what. It, they, now they die. Now Blue's deciding to push them. Never mind. A little bit of a pet peeve here, but he did see the blue guy die. There wasn't really a need to go up that high, especially because it took a lot of fall damage. But it works out. Buys a minor fatigue trap. That's really good. Traps are so good in solo bed wars because you can tell when your bed's about to get destroyed, and that's kind of important. He's a little bit fortunate that green hasn't gone for him yet. Although I do see a bridge over there. Breaks the blue bed, blue disconnected, so now he just gets to bridge to green. Makes his way all the way over to green. I don't know what green was doing this whole game because that was a free bed. <laughs> Aqua bed was so free. Oh, okay, there we go. Goes for the bed. Um, and somehow dies. Okay, that was a very interesting game. Overall, I think you did a great job of just eliminating people on the first rush. You didn't really die that much, so that was really good. You were able to get a lot of gear and just overpower everyone. One thing I'd do for the future is just be more aware of where everyone is. If that green guy was paying attention, he could have got your bed a long time ago. It did work that game, but it's something to consider for the future. So here we are on the second game. This was submitted by Voco, Voco, something like that. I don't know. We're playing doubles on Krogorm. Why are you playing Krogorm? I don't know, man. Something about Krogorm just really just sets me off. Rushes diagonally. Pretty sure that's the way you're supposed to go, so that's good. Uh, gets a nice team wipe here. Um, solid bed break as well. Does he get the team wipe immediately after that? Almost, almost. The reason I picked this game is because this was a very textbook good doubles game. Both players are carrying their own weight. Their teammates getting diamonds, they bought minor fatigue and prot. Vako is getting some nice team wipes as well. In doubles, you don't have to pay as much attention to everyone in the game because there's two players that can keep track of both sides. So as long as you and your teammate are rushing both directions, you don't have to worry as much. Gets the yellow here, uh, actually decides to wait and break their bed. I really, really like this play. The reason I like this is because when you don't break a bed, the people won't know that they t they're about to lose their bed, so they have less time to prepare. And usually when people have more time to prepare, they get to go to middle and they get to be really annoying. So he gave this guy as little time to prepare as possible and got the kill because of it. Makes his way all the way over to white. Gets this Nice team wipe on the bridge. And is able to get this bed. It's a triple wool for some reason. Uh, don't do triple wool. <laughs> it doesn't really do anything, especially on a fast iron map like this where everyone and their grandmother has shears. Gets one kill here. Other person comes in. He's pretty low, places a lot of blocks, and gets a good kill there. That's really good. That's very, very solid. And after all that, there's only one team left, Gray, and they don't even have a bed. So this is a really solid game, despite it being on Krogorum. Um, I still hate Krogorum. <laughs> this hasn't changed my mind a single bit. 
fights Gray here at the Diamond Gen. Um, not entirely sure what that Fireball was supposed to be, um, but somehow still gets one kill, which is kind of impressive <laughs> looking at the situation you were in there. And I believe the teammate goes in and gets the final kill. Overall, I think that was just a textbook doubles game. That was perfect. Team wipes were great. Both players were carrying their own weight, and it was very solid overall. The one thing I would change, though, is uh, Krogorm. And we are back for the final game of the video. This one was submitted by Ko James. We're playing solo Bedwars on Rooted. I didn't think it could get much worse than Krogorm, but apparently it can. So let's go. This is a fast diagonal speed bridge. My god. I'm pretty sure this is the correct way to go, so you're doing it right. Goes up, knocks the guy off. Solid kill. Solid bed break. Nice. A little bit of a fumble on the on the PvP department there, but hey, it worked out in the end. That's all that matters. Now, I like him being aware here and seeing that there's a person rushing him from this side. That's pretty good. I like that. Obviously, he's in absolutely no danger because that blue guy just lost his bed, but it's good to know. So they make their way over to the blue base here. Blue was eliminated, but green is over there, so they're going to rush this way. They go up to fight the green guy, which is good. He's trying to chase this person down. Um, the person does win the fight because they were up against that wall. And they also had a stone sword. And so I believe a person pulls up here. Yes, okay. So someone uh, is able to rush them from the other side. And one thing I like to do when I die um, in solo is I like to just look at my base. I like to see what's going on at my base just to see if anyone's coming. Um, you can't really do much about it because you're in spectator mode, but it's good to know if someone's going to be there so you can be prepared. Um, so that might have helped a little bit to maybe not lose that 1v1, but it's fine. Now this person doesn't have a bed. Green is coming to them from the other side. Oh, that's not green. That's aqua. Whoopsie. <laughs> so they're running all the way back towards pink. Um, uses the TNT there to isolate themselves from aqua. That's, that's actually really smart. Buys them some time. Uh, Pink pulls up on them, uses the fireball, <laughs> gets a little lucky on the fireball kill there, but hey, it worked. KB stick, I, I personally don't use a lot of KB sticks, but they are, um, <laughs> they can be very good. Oh, Aqua's right behind them, I don't think they even knew that. Uh, is able to get out of there though. Um, are they going for the, oh, they're just running away. Aqua did fall, so they're in no rush, but they still went to just leave which I, I mean that's fine if you know you can get out you might as well do it when you, when you're trying to clutch a game just get as many emeralds as you can just avoid everyone just be lonely and get uh emeralds so they have the emeralds and they're going towards the aqua bed here which is left open just kidding there's a guy there i didn't even see that this person is trying to push them he does have the kb stick what goes on here this is very aggro you should probably be hitting them with some sort of weapon i was gonna say wow okay um, gets the double extension, one heart. Oh my, okay, well. <sighs> uh, that was, th th that position there was, a could have been executed maybe a little better. I think you went a little aggro there. Um, it, it worked out because that person wasn't really the most aware what was going on, but maybe next time I wouldn't push that. I'd just bring the emeralds back to another base, but. With 8 emeralds, I love buying a pearl and jump in invis. Sometimes they even buy a speed or or two jumps works as well. Either one doesn't really matter too much. And I like that they're taking the time to organize their inventory. It's such a small thing. It's such a small thing to organize your inventory, uh, but it actually really helps a lot because you can know where everything is and it's really good to know where your pearls are, where your pots are, so you can use them um, as fast as you can when you need to. So Pink kills Aqua here after breaking their bed. Uh, looks like they're going back for more. Oh, they actually bed traded. Uh, buys a tracker. That's really good. I like buying a tracker when you already have pearl and pots so that you can just go to them instantly. I, I, I like that because, uh, he has emeralds and pots. Uh, this pink person does not. So they are at a huge advantage. A little bit of an aggro pearl there, but it works. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, okay. Um, Going in, goes for the fight, does not have sharpness, but gets the jump on a gets good kid, and gets the win. You know what? That was not too bad. I did not hate that. 
Overall, I think the emerald usage there was really good. They kind of knew what they were doing. They had really good reflexes to get out of bad situations. One thing I would change is maybe try not to get into those tough situations in the first place. It's good to have awareness of who's going to your bed. Um, and it's good to not push people when you don't have a bed because you can't respawn. Overall, played that a little bit too aggro, but it still worked out because you had the reflexes to get out of there. But yeah, that was a solid clutch.